advanced encryption standard or advanced encryption system AES it's the replacement of the uh, famed DES that has done its job very faithfully and was never compromised mathematically and served us very well however its key size is too small and the uh, algorithm itself is not very uh, effective in both hardware and software so it was time for the uh, National Institute of Standard and Technology in the US to announce a competition to replace this and eventually after a lot of uh, filtering and debates uh, they have zeroed down on what we today call advanced encryption system as we will see AES keeps the tradition of this the ancestry is clearly and obvious clearly obvious it's a block cipher that means we take the the string of the plain text P and we chop it to blocks the difference is that this if you remember was chopped into 64 bits per block and AS is twice the size 128 bits per block but the overall process is the same AS is a box that you feed the first block with the key and you get a block of 128 bits of ciphertext. You take this block and you position it here. And you go to the second block, do the same, with the same key, have another cipher, and position it here, and here, and here, and here. At the end, you have a ciphertext as long as the plain text. And every 128 bits have been encrypted with AES, all using the same key. Sounds familiar? That's the DES idea. Now when we open up AES and look inside, we find that it, like this, it's a combination of the basic recognized primitives of cryptography. Substitution, transposition, and bitwise operation. It's a different setup than this, but the concept is the same. Another concept that was taken unchanged from this is the concept of repetition. You take a relatively simple cipher and the output of it you use as plain text to another relatively simple cipher. And the output of it you send to an, a third relatively simple cipher. And you thread them together so that despite the fact that the building blocks are relatively simple, relatively, the overall is robust. That is the design uh, solution in DES and the same in AES. So let's now open this box and see what's in it. Okay, so uh, we are taking AES on the operating table and open, opening up the box. We agreed that what's happening, the input is a block, 128 bits plain text, 
a key with that has different uh, sizes, depends on the uh, flavor of AES. Unlike this, AES comes with three flavors. But the minimum size of the key is the size of the block, 128 bits. can rise to 192, 256, but the basic one is 128 bits. Just like this size. Now, when we open it, we see something as follows. We see here an XOR box that the plain text goes into. And then we see a series of one, two, ten, or maybe more, depends on the flavor, but minimum ten rounds that each of them takes the output of the preceding round, uses it as plain text, and feeds it it to get the cipher text. It goes on and on and on, and the final result comes here, and that's the cipher text. So that's the overall picture. And I ask, how does the key come in? Well, what we do with the key, we take it into a box that spawns 128-bit size subkeys for each of those operations, subkey here, subkey here, subkey here, subkey here, subkey here, sub here etc. So the 128 bits of the key in the basic setup undergo some uh, mixing and uh, uh, multiplication of bits so that you have 128 bits of some identity for each of those boxes or those sub-boxes in AES. Now, what happens in the XOR? Very simple. The uh, 128 bits of the block are XOR with the 128 bits, not of this key, but of the sub-key that is coming out from the key generation or the subkey generation box in AES. And we do uh, XOR by 0 over 0 leads to 0, 0 over 1 leads to 1, 1 over 0 leads to 1, 1 over 1 leads to 0. This is the formula of XOR, and that's how we get here 128 bits that are a result of XORing the plain text with the subkey. Now, this is what the XOR box does. And then it takes the output and brings it here to those 10 boxes. Those 10 boxes are a repetition. Each of them uses a different key. But inside, we will see a combination of substitution and transposition and XOR, bitwise operation. So let's now further dissect this AES and take one of those 10 boxes, open them up, and see what's in there. Okay? Uh, this is one of those repeating boxes inside AES. And what we see in each of those boxes is a succession of four primitives goes to substitution, then it goes to transposition, and then it goes to substitution again, and then it goes to XOR with the 128 bits from the sub key, and the result comes out to the next uh, box, 10 elements like this. So, Substitution, transposition, substitution, and XOR. This substitution is static. We call it static. Uh, 
uh, can be represented by a simple table. It's byte-wise. You take the 128 bits and you uh, look upon them as 16 bytes, where each byte has 8 bits, and each byte is replaced by a different byte. So, there is a list that says byte 1 is replaced uh, by byte 2, by byte 10. If you have here a list, the total number of, uh, uh, of bytes is 2 to the power of 8. Now, 2 to the power of 8 uh, equals, uh, I think, 256. So there are 256 possible bytes, different combination of zeros and ones. And so all that you need is a table that says that uh, byte uh, uh, 2 is replaced by byte uh, uh, 147, and byte 3 by replaced by byte 90. A fixed list. So you go over this 128 bits, so look upon them byte by byte. Each byte you replace according to this table with a proper byte. Substitution, simple, done. Transposition. There is a special method uh, where you take uh, uh, byte-wise and you replace the order of those bytes in some way, and that's the transposition. The result goes to the substitution. In this second substitution, it's much more complicated. In this substitution, there are 30, instead of doing it byte-wise, we are doing it four byte at a time. Now, four byte is two to the power of 32 options, which is, I think it's about four billion. So it's not practical to have a table of four billion entries that will say which of the combination of four bytes is replaced by which combination of four bytes. And therefore, instead of a table, we have a formula that you enter into the formula uh, those four bytes, and you get another four byte. But essentially, except for the size that it's four byte per four byte, as opposed to here byte by byte, it is still substitution. The result goes to the XOR. Very simple, sub 128 bits is XOR with the 128 bits that are coming from this second substitution, and the result of this XOR goes out to the next box. So that's what there is. When we uh, go through the uh, mathematical foundation, we will see the very elegant math in which the formula that accomplishes the uh, substitution of four bytes with another four byte, how does it work? It's very elegant, it's very nice, but for you to understand AES, you don't need to go through this math. What we described here, that's AES. And if you remember, if you go back to the uh, original picture, that is the original picture of the first cut. The block of plain text together with the key uh, get into the AES box, a key generation box that generates subkey for each of those elements, and the uh, 128 bits undergo mixing and churning and getting more and more complex uh, treatments. So it will be very difficult, hopefully, for the adversary to take the ciphertext and roll it back to the plaintiffs. That's all we're trying to do, to make it difficult for him to do. And we have learned how this looks from the inside, and that's again the full picture. It's a block cipher. The two sides that use it have to have a shared key 
which they exchange securely because otherwise the integrity of AS is uh, in jeopardy. And this scheme, which has proven itself to be uh, so far resistant of any attempt to crack it mathematically, because of the key size, it started with 128 bits and up to 256. Even the fastest computers today cannot handle it. We don't know what quantum computers will do. Uh, and uh, in most places today, DES or triple DES is replaced with AES. There is an increased simplicity, and uh, while AES has not been checked and checked and tested, as much as this, uh, there is a lot of confidence that it works fine and this becomes the main workhorse for modern computer.